Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and we're looking at another replay. This was sent in by Visky253. Now I've actually done a replay from him before, it was on the Katushka and also the IL-2 showing how to fly that thing to really great effect. Now he's in an aerialistic battle in a P-51D Mustang. Now the Mustang itself is in a really interesting place in the tech tree. Uh, it's been, well, it seems from Gaijin's point of view, maybe quite hard to balance, not because the plane itself is bad, but because it doesn't really fit the meta. The Mustang is one of the planes I actually have the most, uh, one of my most played in the game. Like, I have the most matches in it in Aerialistic. And my thoughts on it is, in a squad, when you have three or four players, uh, sorry, two or three players around you, it's an amazing plane because you climb to 5,000 or 6,000, you watch the rest of your team get annihilated, maybe they get one or two kills, and then you can clean up as that squad. But if you try and do that method as a single individual, or maybe there's only two of you, it's not going to work because you don't have the firepower to pick apart the enemy team who has tried to swarm your allied team. Now, if allied teams decided to all climb at 5,000 and there wasn't as many attackers or bombers, then maybe it would be a very easy game. But unfortunately, that's not the reality we live in. So as a Mustang pilot, you kind of have to adapt to it. And that's generally quite hard to do because at the end of the day, you've got a heavy aircraft, or at least it feels heavy in the game. You've got a powerful engine, but it takes a while to get up to speed. It doesn't climb particularly well, uh, especially at the lower altitudes. So you're sat with a plane which you have to whip really hard, which is full of fuel, and you have to get it to a decent height before you start outperforming any other aircraft. At the same time, though, it does have some wonderful 50 cals, and it does do real work. Now, comparing this thing to the P-47, the P-47N, which sits at the same BR, you're gonna have to take the P-47 every time. The fact it gets an airspawn, it has more guns, it's better at the role that the Mustang finds itself uh, when we're talking about, you know, high altitude fighting and then diving down energy fighting. But the Mustang is still fun to fly. But if you're going to fly it, in my opinion, you should try and stick to squads just so you can, uh, you know, rack up kills on an enemy team. So we're against some BV-238s. Now he's shooting the center of the BV, maybe because he's in front of it, trying to hit the pilots, but he actually does take out one of the engines, also sets one on fire, so that's a really good job at starting off. That BV was actually pretty low at 3000 meters, not exactly sure what he was doing. But another reason I wanted to uh, focus on this replay is because a lot of people, or at least a few people in the comments over the over since the BV has come out, have asked me how to deal with this. Now, I have talked about it in the past on how to deal with this, but I think it's much better showing you. And Visky here is going to show you. As you saw there, he approached the BV from the front, shooting it in the center, trying to take out the pilot. So that is one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is by unbalancing it. But that's a hell of a much harder shot uh, by, you know, trying to hit the tip of a wing trying to get it on balance so it can't go straight because the BV has a ton of power behind it and a massive tail on it with a huge rudder, huge elevator, so therefore it can still control itself even if you take off that wingtip. So sometimes it's better to go for the center. If you're behind the machine, then in my opinion it's better to go for the front of it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> If you're behind the machine, you should go for the wingtip. If you're in front of it, go for center mass, hit the pilots. Now we have a HE-100. Not exactly sure what he's doing, but um, he gets popped <laughs> uh, by an XP-38G. So uh, it wasn't a cock up in the replay there. Uh, you know, Visky didn't actually get the kill, but now there's a Focke Wolf 190A1. And the 50 cals are doing their darndest to not do anything. It seems like a lot of the times it's either you send uh, everything on fire or nothing really happens. Uh, so he's taking some shots at another Focke Wolf. My guess is that they're kind of ground pounding or they got brought down by a lot of the enemies and Visky has followed them. Sitting at around 500 kilometers an hour, he seems to have been weaponing this whole time, which is good. Going for a turn into them and then deciding maybe it's not a great idea. 
I mean, you see five fighters in front of you, you have an XP 38G trying to run away. So, it's it would be suicide uh, to do that. There's also a HS129 there, and I have no idea why he's up here, but you know, he's trying to join in. So instead, it's better to turn your speed into some altitude. Try and get some altitude, try and get above these guys, and then come back in. You see that P-51 behind, maybe he can come in, try and uh, create a distraction, and hopefully, you know, maybe you can take these guys on. But right now, he's definitely not in a favorable position. Six uh, enemy planes on him, with his team going after the HE-219. Uh, and the rest of the team either dead, or in the 6,000 to 5,000 meter zone, which I talked about before. This is what I mean, if you are just a single player, you can't do the tactic of going up to the 5,000, 6,000 meter altitude and then diving down, because by that time, your team's already dead. It's very much a catch-22, you want to go up to that altitude to be as effective as possible, but a lot of the time you're not able to, because your team is already destroyed. So, it's either an education thing, <laughs> or hopefully it's something that will eventually change in the meta. But, well, I've been here for a long time and it hasn't been changed. Visky is trying to set up on two planes here. Now, the two planes are actually going after a Spitfire, and the Spitfire, unfortunately, just got destroyed. So therefore, it's him versus two. He is in the superior position, though, has to hit this shot to make sure that he can attack the other fighter, and he does get him. He knocks out the pilot of the Fokker Wolf. This means he has a preferential position on the BF-109, but he turns quickly, the BF-109. Seems like he's going after someone else, and he takes some shots. Looks like he may have hit him, but not to do a lot. He does have the superior energy advantage, therefore he can loop over on this BF-109G and be able to get on him. It looks like it's a trap, and, well, <laughs> there goes the BF-109. So that's two out of the six dealt with. We have once again lost all of our altitude, but, you know, you can gain some, and it seems like everybody else is distracted with some of the other enemies. So therefore, what he can do is try and get some altitude once again. He's taken on a BV, got an assist out of it, taken on two fighters, been able to kill them both, but as you saw, he waited for one of his teammates to get jumped on, and then go help him. This is the playstyle I prefer. The, I, the cleanup fighter, or the supportive fighter, if you want to talk in uh, that kind of sense. The reason to do this is to basically be able to clean up a battle, and uh, therefore the uh, enemies are at lower energy and they're a lot easier to fight, and if you're accurate with your guns, then you're gonna do some great work. He takes on a Fokker Wolf and chews off his wing. My god, these 50 cows. <laughs> a lot of people were complaining a while ago when they got buffed. Uh, I don't think there's any issue with them, really. Uh, they just act very similar to 20s and 30s do now. It seems like all the guns at this BR are very, very capable at destroying everything. The only aircraft when it comes to a normal fighter, which I struggle of killing, is the P-47. And that's not just down to the fact it can eat bullets, it's down to the fact that it's incredibly quick as well. But that's another Farquhar Wolf. The Farquhar Wolf, I think, would have been in a better place if he had ammunition to actually try and head on Visky, but he decided not to. So now we're going into that supportive fighter mode, trying to take out that C202. And it looks like our XP 38G was able to do that anyway. So now at 2000 meters, it is time to make a decision. Do we go after the fighters? Or do we go after the BV-238, which is the more annoying to catch after a long time? Well, it's the BV-238. The BV-238 can climb to the heavens, and it'll be very hard to spot him. Uh, even if, you know, you've just gone to refuel, you get more ammunition, you've still got to find him. And if you don't have a blind hunt or an, an Avenger order, it can be incredibly annoying to find those damn things. So, he makes the conscious decision to go after the BV-238. At the same time, if you look at the map, if he goes after the BV-238, he's closer to his own airfield, so therefore uh, he'll be able to get down. You've got to remember, he's killed three aircraft and an assist. Ammunition must be at least lower than 50%. He hasn't fired a ton, 
But the Mustang doesn't have as much ammo as some of its American counterparts, such as stuff like the P-47. Now he pulls his elevator straight up to convert speed or energy into altitude so he can get level with the BV-238. The reason to do this is so he can shoot the cockpit once again. Fires very early at around 1.5 and then he tries to target the center once again and it pays off. He knocks out the pilots but in a true BV-238 fashion he does take quite a lot of damage. That looks like water completely sprawling out of his aircraft and uh, maybe it ran out or maybe it sealed itself who knows but that BV-238 is down and as I said if you're approaching a BV-8 from the front the best place to attack it is the center of the plane trying to take out the pilots that's generally the best way to uh, go after most bombers especially the larger ones such as stuff like the B-17 so therefore uh, go after them in that way. If you're behind them, it's much better to try and focus on uh, focus on wingtips and stuff like that. Is this guy still alive? Why is it not showing up in the replay? It doesn't say that this BV-238 has actually been shot down, but he isn't being marked. Maybe it's because Visky isn't targeting him. But anyway, the BV has been smashed up, it's been set on fire, and it's got engines down. So I'm guessing he didn't actually knock the pilots there, but that was the idea, right? That's what you can see he's going for, and I think that's a good idea. Unfortunately, at the same time, Visky doesn't have an engine. The engine itself has died, or it's dying, because it's uh, definitely running out of water or run out, and also fuel is coming out of his plane. Now generally you don't have to worry about fuel in the Mustang, uh, but maybe his other concern is the fact that he will be low on ammo. Luckily, on this map, there are two airfields, one closer to the battle line. He's basically over one right now. And then also you have AI fighters. AI fighters on this map, I have no idea why they exist, but they are incredibly annoying to fight. And I have no idea why they're there. Uh, generally, you see two of them spawn on either side, and they just come at you, and they always come at you at the most awful positions. They always come at you if you're trying to land or you're low on ammo, and I want to know whose decision it was to put in these AI fighters. But anyway, there you go. The BV-238 is shot down. As I talked about before, unbalancing the thing generally means it will go down. It will take a while, and one of the most annoying things after doing a lot of damage to a BV is if it gets away and survives long enough where you don't get the kill. But Visky has been able to get the kill. Four air kills, one assist at this moment in time. A wonderful position. He's also done damage to that AI fighter, and hopefully the AI fighter leaves him alone now. It seemed like uh, he did significant damage to the engine and also popped the water. Now generally, once a uh, BF-109's water gets popped, it's pretty much gone. It doesn't take very long for the engine to die, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about it. When he lands, he's able to actually miss the <laughs> camps, and then his wheels fall off for no apparent reason. I think it was because uh, he was hitting Q&E, screwing with the rudder to try and slow himself down, and the wheels didn't like that very much. But at least he's repairing, that's the main thing. He was able to get down with significant damage, and after pretty much killing and doing really well against four fighters, and getting an assist on a BV-238. Well, one of those kills was a BV, but depending on how you feel, the BV is either a fighter, a bomber, an attacker, whatever you want to call it. It kills planes and bombs everything. So in my opinion, it's much more of an attacker than a heavy bomber, just because it definitely trades well one for one. But anyway, that is the end of the match, and a wonderful performance in the Mustang. Another plane, I would say, which isn't as strong as some of its counterparts, especially when we compare it to the P-47N, but doesn't mean you can't do well in it, and doesn't mean you can't have a great game in it, and Visky has shown us a wonderful game in it. That's four air kills, one assist, no deaths, a wonderful soft landing. So, if you have any more replays, please look in the description, and there is a link to an email account where you can send them to, and I will review them, I will record them, and I will show them on the channel. I hope you all 
have wonderful days all, all together or all collective, whatever you want to say. But anyway, uh, have a nice day.